I'm Adrian Bowles with RT Insights and Storm Insights. And in this series, we talk to executives in uh, innovative technology companies about what they're seeing in the market in terms of issues that buyers are facing. So one of the things we want to talk about today is uh, with the rapid adoption of IoT, that product managers that are buying are concerned about how this is going to impact what they already have, how do you integrate new technology with the existing ones. So to talk to us about it today, my guest is Mike Peach, the uh, general manager of middleware at Red Hat. Tell us a little bit about how you see this, what are customers asking for, what are the issues? The good news, uh, for especially for our enterprise customers who are maybe just dipping their toes in the water in the IoT space, is that a lot of the application development on the back end looks pretty similar to what they already know how to do for general non-IoT applications. While, of course, the devices, the sensors, and the kinds of data that are coming in uh, from those, those new uh, devices out there in the field uh, may have very different formats, may have very different uh, sort of frequencies and volumes and, and so on, the actual uh, elements of middleware that a developer to use on the back end to integrate different elements together, to handle streams, to handle messages, to apply rules, to uh, do different kinds of filtering and aggregation and so on, a lot of that's the same. So you're not seeing a big risk in having to swap out something that you're comfortable with to something else just for the IoT. Right. There certainly will be new and more specialized I would say incremental pieces of middleware and, and components and maybe even types of mm, editing tools that one might use. But it's exactly that. It's incremental. It's not, a, it's not a rip and replace type of proposition. Part of making the volume tractable is filtering and sort of selecting, aggregating, etc. And for that aspect, there are tools like um, business rules management systems. So, you know, for example, in, in our middleware, we provide one of those. Uh, uh, on the variety front, there are also uh, some some bits of middleware that can be very helpful. So, for example, there's uh, data virtualization, which is uh, a layer of software that would allow uh, data sources that have different formats, different structures, and so on to be uh, aggregated in sort of a, a middleman, you know, virtual layer where those different uh, formats, those different structures can be normalized and then presented to the, to the consuming layer as if all that data was in one single nice, clean, unified you know, database, data structure, okay. etc. So that's uh, a bit of help on the variety side. Uh, when you get to the uh, velocity aspect, one of the key technical considerations there is to do as much as possible in memory. And that's where an in-memory data grid really comes into play, right? Where mm -hmm. you're not having to write to disk and then consume from disk or have too many uh, sort of uh, uh, high latency uh, interim steps in processing of the data. If you can do everything in, in memory, you can get a lot closer to real time, handle a lot greater velocity. And that's where, again, a product, a middleware uh, solution such as an in-memory data grid can really come, come to bear. It sounds like the key thing to remember is that if you've got a good um, middleware stack to begin with, people shouldn't sweat it. Exactly. So. That's, that's absolutely the idea. All right. Well, great. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Yeah. Thank you, Adrian. Take care.